House Democrats are working to complete articles of impeachment against President Trump, marking the fourth time in history that articles of impeachment have been introduced against a sitting president. Meanwhile, one of the leading Democrats who called for impeachment now says that she's undecided. Congresswoman Elisa Stoken of Michigan told a reporter earlier this week she is waiting to read the report before deciding if she thinks the president should be removed from office. So joining us now from Capitol Hill to weigh in on all of this is Republican Congressman Jody Heiss of Georgia. He's a member of the House Oversight Committee. Congressman, welcome back to the show. It's great to see you, sir. Thanks. Thank you Absolutely. very much. Good to be with you. Congressman, what are you hearing in the halls of Congress there about Democrats who may be not voting for the for, to impeach President Trump? Of some reporting we've seen, maybe 10 to 12 moderate Democrats are considering that. Have you heard those conversations, and what do you think about that? Yeah, we are hearing that, and uh, really, and, um, myself and Andy Biggs put out an op-ed about this a couple of weeks ago because we were hearing this same kind of thing in the hallways, that there are, you know, there's about 30 Democrats that are in very difficult districts in the first place, just from a political perspective, uh, the districts that the president won. And the problem with this whole impeachment inquiry, as we all know, has been a lack of evidence. There's been a lot of hearsay, secondhand, thirdhand information. Not a single fact witness has even been brought forward. Uh, even the articles that have been submitted are very vague as to specific issues of what the president did. And so uh, there are now some Democrats, and I think rightfully so, beginning to get cold feet as to whether or not they want to go over the cliff on impeachment. Now, in fairness, a number of the fact witnesses have basically been blocked from, by the White House from testifying, so we should put that out there. But I want to ask, you know, um, another idea that had been floated by a number of moderate Democrats was the idea of instead of doing impeachment, moving forward with a vote to censure the president. Would, your, would you or other of your Republican colleagues potentially consider that? Uh, well, I wouldn't. Again, I haven't seen any uh, evidence of wrongdoing. But uh, that, again, is a conversation that uh, we are hearing being floated around a little bit by Democrats. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't personally think they're going to go down that path. I think they have too much invested in the impeachment inquiry. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, they're, they're, they're going to go down this path. I think it's going to be mm -hmm. very difficult for Speaker Pelosi and Adam Schiff and others, Nadler and others, to put on the brakes at this point and uh, look as though they've been going in the wrong direction. I think they're going to proceed with this, and I do believe that they'll pay consequences for it politically. You're probably right there, sir. I do want to ask you about some of your colleagues in the Senate. So the Senate Republicans have basically indicated they only want the impeachment trial to last for approximately two weeks, and they don't have the 51 votes to call witnesses like Hunter Biden or others that the president and his team would like to see. Do you agree with that decision? Yeah, I, I really, I wish it would go further. You know, we've had months and months now here in the House that has been an extremely unfair process. I mean, even even just yesterday, for an example, we had a motion to recommit that r literally read the House rules that say, look, uh, our colleagues on the other side, the rules state that the minority party is to be given a minority hearing. Mm -hmm. And we have been denied the right to have a minority hearing and call our own witnesses with this. And yet, in spite of what the rules say, rules passed by the Democrats, I might add, every one of them voted for us not to be allowed to have a minority hearing. And so from the perspective of here in the House, this has been such a one-sided partisan uh, hoax from the very beginning. My hope would be is that the Senate, if it, once it gets to them, they begin a trial. They have an authentic trial and they call witnesses uh, they call the witnesses that the administration would like to cross-examine and so forth, and let's have a real trial. Yeah. I would hate to see this just come and go in two weeks uh, as though nothing really happened. I think it only serves justice uh, to have an authentic hearing, and I hope the Senate will do that. Uh -huh. Congressman, let me ask you a bigger picture about Georgia. Obviously, uh, Stacey Abrams came close to winning the governor's mansion. Some Democrats think that the state could be in play in 2020. Do you think that this is a state that the president could afford to take for granted? Oh, no, I don't think the uh, uh, president can take anything for granted. I mean, these are uh, highly charged political days in which we're living in every state and virtually every district across the country. And I don't think the president is taking Georgia for granted. I don't think anyone is doing that. Um, 
And so it's going to, George, there's no question, that particularly this uh, next go round, we're going to have both of our senators. Highly unusual scenario, but two senators up for election. There's no question that that is going to be highly charged and highly focused on among Democrats uh, to come in and try to take Georgia. And so there's going to be a lot of focus in Georgia, no question about mm-hmm. that. And I certainly don't think the president's taking that for granted. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so sir. much. Really grateful for your time, sir. My pleasure. Merry Christmas to y'all. You too. Next on Rising is the media's Bernie blackout finally over and a new slate of New York Times articles about the senator seems to indicate maybe yes. Bernie Sanders senior advisor, speechwriter Dave Sirota, he joins us next to discuss that and a lot more when Rising rolls on.